Hi guys, welcome back. I'm so excited to say we are finally doing DIYs on this channel today. Yes, it's been a while. So I'm super excited to share them with you. I hope you love them. And without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so first up is this art piece that I found on the Serena and Lily website. And we're gonna be using this eight by 10 frame to recreate it. So first things first though, I had to take the plastic off and then deconstruct the frame completely so that I only had the frame. So the glass and the backing needed to go. And then it was on to spray painting. So I took my favorite gold spray paint and spray painted the entire thing, making sure that I was covering up that white to make sure that it looked like the frame in the picture. As that was drying, I moved on to making the artwork. Now I had this art pad lying around, but you can find art pads at Dollar Tree if you need to. But I started off by just tracing around the frame so that I made sure that my picture would be center in place for where the glass was going to lay. And then I started to trace the outline of what the image was. I wanted to make sure I had the right shape and construct before I actually painted with black paint. And personally, I found this just to be a much easier method because you can erase pencil, you can't erase black paint though. And once I was happy with my sketch, I went in with my black paint. Now when I first started to put the black paint on, I made sure that my brush wasn't completely soaked. I wanted to make sure that I lightly brushed it on first time around. This was just to ensure that I didn't make any mistakes or that a glob of paint didn't drop on it and just ruin the whole thing. Now I will say something that I didn't do that probably would have made things easier was to actually outline the edges of how thick I wanted each of the bands to be. Instead, with my pencil, I just ended up kind of tracing the actual shape, not necessarily how thick it was supposed to be. So I do think if I actually created those edges for myself, it might have been a little bit easier for me to actually paint this all together. Another caveat to that, or another painting tip if you will, if you're doing this, make sure you start with a smaller brush. I say this because with a smaller brush, you can make lines bigger, but you can't make it any thinner if you overline it too much. For reference, I use my Schmedium, my smallish medium size brush for this. But once I was happy with the thickness of the bands, all I had to do was go back in and kind of smooth out the edges of it. Now thankfully these shapes didn't have to be perfect circles or else I would have been in trouble. But other than that, I felt like it was just easy just to kind of go in with my brush and kind of clean up those lines. And once it was given ample time to dry, I just went in with my scissors, cut it to the shape of the frame and then placed it in the frame accordingly. And just like that, a high-end sleek art piece was recreated for just a few dollars. Next up is this concrete bowl recreation. So we're gonna start off with these two bowls that I got from the Dollar Tree as our mold. I decided to use cement all, it's a rapid set, and I just wanted to make sure that it would dry quickly and didn't have any stones in it. So I poured a fair amount of this mix into my bucket and got some water and got to mixing. So when you're working with concrete or cement, the consistency you wanna shoot for is basically like a peanut butter consistency. At least that's what I've been told, so that was what I was essentially shooting for. Um, it didn't happen, <laughs> not until maybe like the fifth try, or should I say maybe I just gave up by the fifth try and said that was good enough. So once I was sort of satisfied with my mixture, I decided to pour it into my large bowl. So my largest bowl that I'm pouring into is essentially going to be the mold for which I create my concrete bowl. Now you wanna try your best to pour it straight down into the bowl without hitting any of the edges of the bowl, and that's just because it's going to create jagged edges and it's going to dry there. I did a great job of not listening to my own advice though. So next, you're gonna take your smallest bowl and press it down gently into the mixture and then place something heavy that has equal weight distribution to keep it centered. 
Once it was dry, I kind of took it out of its mold and realized that I kind of need to do some finessing, so I decided to sand it with 60 grit sandpaper. Now I will say the 60 grit actually worked really well with this cement bowl, but I will say that it did wear it down pretty quickly. So if you do need to do a lot of sanding, just have a lot of sandpaper pads on hand. So once I smoothed down the edges to my liking, I moved on to my next step of filling the bowl. So I took these stones from the Dollar Tree and filled it inside my bowl along with a canister for heat. That's because I wanted to recreate that fire pit look, but I will say another option for this cement bowl is to recreate kind of a planter look and using succulents in the center of it. And for this last DIY, we're gonna be using table tennis balls or ping pong balls to recreate this look. So we're gonna start off by spray painting them gold. Now I kept them in the container cause I thought it would be much easier to spray paint them that way and not have them roll off. It sorta of worked. The only issue is if you spray paint too close or if you spray paint a little hard and move too fast, they popped out. And for the backing for the mirror, I used foam board. I basically traced the circle mirror and then traced a half an inch out from that. Once the backing was cut out, I used my spray paint to spray paint the backing as well. Now, because the mirror is going to be taking up the majority of this space, you really don't need to actually spray paint the whole thing. You essentially can just spray paint the edges and the rim of the foam board in order to make it look completely gold. So I gave that ample time to dry before I went on to constructing the mirror itself. Now you can get small mirrors from Dollar Tree. I ended up getting this mirror though. It's a charger plate from the dollar spot at Target. And to make sure it adhered to the foam board, I used a combination of E6000 and of course my glue gun to make sure that it stayed. And because hot glue dries fast, I had to work relatively quickly and made sure that I just flipped it over, placed it down where I basically traced that line for it to sit. Now for the ping pong balls, you wanna start with a box cutter and cut where the seam is. Next, you wanna take a good pair of scissors and cut along that line about halfway. So you want half of that line to be completely cut open. And once you've cut halfway around that line, essentially what you wanna do is kind of go up the ball and cut across all the way to the end of your other opening. So essentially you're just creating a lip of the ball to overhang the rim of the mirror. So basically it's gonna look like a weird looking Pac-Man. So once you're done with the tedious task of cutting all those ping pong balls to the right shape, you can start gluing them down to the mirror. Now, when you do glue them down, you wanna make sure that they're sitting on the foam rim, not on the mirror itself. And the reason why I chose half an inch for the rim is because I wanted to make sure that there was enough space for the ping pong ball to sit on top of it, but I also didn't want it to be too big that it just kind of looked wonky in the end. So for this DIY in particular, it took me about three packages of ping pong balls in order to recreate this look, minus a few because I did have some really bad cuts. So if you do wanna have better spacing and if you wanted them closer together, I would definitely suggest getting just four packages just to be on the safe side. And if you did actually wanna hang this up on your wall, I would definitely suggest heavy duty command strips, something that can carry at least five pounds. All right, everyone, and that is it for the content today, but thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you like this video and you wanna see more like it, definitely make sure you give it a thumbs up. Also, if you're not subscribed, if I pass that five check for you, definitely make sure you're subscribed and you hit that little notification bell so you're in the know when I post again. And last but not least, if you're looking for more DIY content, I have projects big and small that I feature on my Instagram that I only show on Instagram. So if you just can't get enough of the content, definitely make sure you give it a follow. But I wanna say thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one. Bye. I'm so ex That did not work. <laughs>